I am very pleased and honored. And you can't imagine how much I am pleased and honored. It's a real privilege to be here and receive this, uh, this, this uh, recognition. Um, I, I thank you very much. I thank the colleagues from the University of Florence, Geneva, uh, in particular for inviting me for organizing uh, this meeting. And I want to spend a couple of words uh, uh, talking about uh, this beautiful group in at the Universidad Paulista, the Laboratorio de Produção e Medio Ambiente, uh, that I attended in 2014, and with with uh, with which we have. Uh, we have a very, very good uh, relationship. I'm so proud to uh, to have your friendship, and um, uh, you are an example uh, of uh, um, how we people can work together and produce a lot of uh, very good things and solutions. Fanny, don't worry because you will be able to produce more and more solution in your uh, in the future. And um, uh, you are uh, an example because you are expert. You are uh, dealing with a lot of um, arguments, but uh, you are um, uh, very well known uh, all around the world. You are the promoter of the uh, advances uh, in clean production network, but you are more, uh, even more generous than all these things. So I thank you very much for uh, involving me in this in this uh, adventure uh, since the beginning. Um, well, uh, I have a presentation, uh, and I will give you uh, a presentation uh, whose aim is uh, uh, to uh, illustrate how to identify. And uh, uh, I'm not crying. I just am. Um, uh, how to identify and exploit uh, um, environmental accounting potentialities in the sense that we practice environmental accounting tools, um, various, uh, but more than monitoring and uh, trying to um, accumulate and produce information. Uh, I think we can do much more with uh, the environmental accounting uh, tools we we are studying, we are developing, and uh, and so on, because there are a lot of potentialities uh, with these uh, uh, with these tools. Uh, in our, uh, because they can help uh, expand studies, we can inspire uh, new activities and art uh, further articulation of activities. Uh, they can obviously increase our information, complementary information, without substituting what we have already, but increase information. And um, another very important point, they can help communicate. We, uh, as an environmentalist, we need strongly to communicate what we are doing. And we must be able to do that because otherwise uh, our findings remain within our offices. Uh, they are, uh, they, they finish to be uh, useless. Uh, just to start, uh, we have to celebrate something uh, this year, 2022. There are some anniversary that we can mention. 50 years old uh, in March, 1972. Uh, the limits to growth was published. The limits to growth report of Club of Rome was published. Um, there was the publication of another masterpiece of uh, our research, of our exploration. That is the blue marble. It's a, a picture uh, from the astronaut that went to discover the moon and discovered the Earth rather than the moon and this was the symbol of uh, the environmentalist the, the environmental movement in those years another curiosity uh, a, a paper by two mainstream economists very good economists william nordas and james tobin who uh, was wondering who were wondering if is the concept of growth were obsolete that is a very important question for that time they uh, real answer was no, actually, but uh, it, it was very important to uh, um, uh, wonder whether this concept. 
1972, there were the publication of smoke on the water of deep purple, but this is another field, so we can skip that. Uh, another anniversary in 1992, uh, so 30 years uh, ago, it was a curiosity, the second biennial conference of the International Society for Ecological Economics that was titled Investing in Natural Capital. The title by curiosity was uh, determined in, in Siena. Uh, a couple of years uh, before. And the curiosity was that in April 22nd this year, uh, the Earth Day, as every year, was celebrated, and the title of the Earth, uh, the, the Earth Day of this year was Invest in Our Planet. So, uh, 30 years after, almost the same title. What does it mean? It means that probably our communication must be improved because we need to change these titles and we need to celebrate some more uh, achievement in our uh, progress. Um, let's start with a difficult thing. We are living in a time of global experiments. What are global experiments? A global experiment is something that is happening globally that involves every one of us uh, and no one can, can escape. Global experiment, for example, is the loss of biodiversity. It is something that is not so much perceived by common people. And we can refer as scientists to the IPBS, the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services. I don't want, I don't want to tell you anything about this report, just to cite one word that they use more, uh, the, uh, many times in the, in the report that is unprecedented. That means that the level of uh, disturbance we are creating to the ecosystem uh, is without, uh, is unprecedented, yes, of course. Italy joined I IPBS, this is an article of 2020, as 135th member, congratulations. Uh, the second global experiment is the COVID, because no one can escape from the spread of COVID, that also in this case, the environment uh, plays an important role, the environmental health play, plays an important role. For example, the invasion of, invasion of ecosystem that disturb uh, animals that facilitate the spillover, or the uh, <clears throat> uh, condition of air pollution that facilitate the spread and the lethality of the, of the, uh, of the virus. The third is obviously the experiment we are doing with the climate, the killing curve. Uh, shown before by Mandalena is uh, an example of what, despite the international conference we are celebrating year after year, uh, um, uh, testifies the, the increase in, in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Uh, these are global experiments, uh, just like the Earth of a Shoot Day, the well-known uh, calculation made by, by the Global Footprint Network that uh, shows us how we are consuming uh, resources. Uh, next week will be the uh, Earth of the Day of this of this year. Um, experiment. What do you think at when you deal with an experiment? Imagine a lab, a lab with someone inside, and the the analyst, the technician in the lab knows almost everything of the lab. Knows who. Uh, the, the people who, who enter the lab, who exit the lab, knows the flows of uh, energy and matter that uh, pass through the lab, knows the, the, the reagent, the, the, the products, knows the energy, knows the, the wastes, knows the solicitation, knows uh, everything about the, the, the tool, the instrument, the, the machineries, etc. The problem we have with the global experiment is that the global experiments occurs in the world, in the earth, and we don't know almost anything about the earth in its global, uh, in its global uh, manifestation. So, we must do a lot of things in order to prevent risks and behave in a sustainable way on this planet. Um, when an environmentalist uh, talk uh, gives a speech uh, in a conference, everyone says, mm, let's listen to the tragedy they, they, are, they are telling 
pass. But we have also global solutions. Just think at the research by Earth system scientists, for example, in planetary boundaries. And the most important one, the most important global solution is the well known Agenda 2030 and the 17 Sustainable Development Goal that I define as thunderous. The thunder, ah, is an incredible opportunity we have to fill our life with content. These are empty boxes, and we have to insert a lot of things within uh, these boxes in order to uh, make the world a better place to uh, to to live. Uh, this is. I have only a couple of slides with something written, but this is important because when you think at a document of the United Nations, you you imagine a boring things, uh, impossible to read. But this document is a bit particular because it is uh, the production of a shared uh, consciousness, a shared uh, awareness. We envisage a world of universal respect for human right, a human dignity, the rule of law, justice, equality, and non-discrimination of respect for race, ethnicity, and cultural diversity, and of equal opportunity permitting the full realization of human potential and contributing to shared prosperity. A world which invests in its children and in which every child grows up free from violence and exploitation. A world in which every woman and girl enjoys full gender equality and all legal, social, and economic barriers to their empowerment have been removed. A just, equitable, tolerant, open, and social inclusive world in which the needs of the most vulnerable are met. This is only a piece of this document. It's very touching and it's very powerful, in my opinion. So we must make it, uh, we must operationalize uh, it. Uh, I would like also to uh, illustrate the three main words that characterize uh, the, the, the sustainable development world. Uh, goal uh, proposal universality every nation is involved integration every goal must be reached must, must be achieved together with the other not not uh, in isolation with uh, from from the other and transformation uh, well we need to spend energy to uh, achieve a result we need to accept that we must do something in order to uh, achieve the result we want to result. And no one must be left behind. It is the most important overall um, um, statement that characterized the agenda 2030. Let's go uh, quickly to the uh, issue of environmental accounting. This is a phrase that is published in a uh, pretty well known book of Charles Perrings, that is an environmental eco eco economist, but also an ecological economist. Uh, an English an Englishman uh, who published in, uh, this book uh, called the Economy and Environment, and he says um, a curious phrase: the human economy is a physical system of production organized according to a social system of signal. Just uh, oh, the the use of the word system is interesting. First of all, second, the recognition of the fact that the economic system is a physical system is also important as well. Third. Uh, we use the social system of signal to organize the physical system. Hmm. What is the social system of signals? The social system of signals is the system of prizes. Prizes. Um, um, the question now is, are prizes able to incorporate everything that is included in the definition of human economy as a physical system, are prizes able to uh, embody the ma materic and energetic and physical part of the economic system? What is environment? The the environment is uh, etymologically something that surrounds us because the definition of environment et etymologically is uh, uh, from the ancient French environ that means to surround 
That's the same meaning of the Italian and Latin based uh, definition ambiente that, that derives from Latin uh, um, ambience ambientis that, that is a uh, um, conjugation of the verb ambire yeah? that, that means to go around. That means that we are not isolated but in continuous connection with the context in which we live. That, the word environment is not something green and stop. The word environment is the context in which we live. And the relationship with the context in which we live means that we are dealing with the environment. From there, from that definition, we can extract something related to sustainability because what is sustainability? I don't want to propose to you the end definition of sustainability. I want to say that sustainability is an, op is an opportunity to talk about human country, to talk about human species. And the human species also in this uh, case, the study of sustainability is seen as something sub uh, included in a context that can be variegated, economic, a physical system uh, of production, but also environmental, social, political, urban, juridical. So from this definition, we can, we can, uh, um, understand that the system of prices is not able to understand the physical, the physical system of production with which Charles Perrings defined uh, the uh, physical system, the, the, the economic system. So we need other tools, other tools that are that, that, that provide uh, complementary information to flank the prices and the monetary. You know perfectly the evolution of the concept of sustainability, the three spheres, the three concentric spheres, the pyramid with environment on the basis. We are we proposed another definition, another another interpretation that is the, the pyramid uh, clockwise um, turn, turned uh, with the, the environment that is the basis of the society and the economy is the top of the pyramid. But we here we have also a chronological and logical succession of events because first we need resources then these resources must, must be uh, managed and organized by uh, uh, the society and then one of the output of the society is the economic outputs uh, the behavior of society and economy is not neutral can provide that some feedbacks some feedbacks uh, on the society itself and on the environment. And we must measure, we must monitor also this because otherwise we lose the contact with the reality, with the physical reality. So uh, uh, again, once again, we need um, more and more tools that can represent what uh, is happening in the context in which we live. Now, I can give you some, some examples these are not examples of monitoring. These are examples of research that can uh, originate something else. Um, I will give you four examples corresponding to four methods, very well-known methods, and um, I hope you find them. The first one is the life cycle in the blackboard full of opportunities to make research and uh, produce numbers and information and so on and so forth. The first example is the life cycle assessment. But why? Because it is one of the most known um, methodology to detect uh, systems, uh, uh, it's standardized, uh, it, it is made by virtue of software, so it, it is determined, it is disciplined by uh, normatives and so on and so forth. So life, life cycle assessment, the, the life cycle assessment helps um, uh, analyze uh, a kind of linear economy from natural resources that are taken, that are transformed, that are consumed and are, and are wasted. But the life cycle response, um, the life cycle uh, assessment can be also used not to share, but to transmit responsibility in the sense that if we know the life cycle of a product, 
we automatically become responsible of what happened before. This is, in my opinion, the message we have to give people, because otherwise, if you have an object, this one, you are responsible for this object only since the object exit from the, uh, from, from the shop, um, till uh, the, the action that you make when you waste, but before the shop and after the, uh, I don't know, the, the, the box in which you, uh, the, the, the trash, what's the name? I can't remember the name of, of the name of these, basically, the bean. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, the story uh, exists all the same, so we must pay attention to that. And uh, from these hints, we can transform the LCA to something that is able to detect and uh, distribute, share, and transmit responsibility also in the case of circular economy. I don't want to say anything about circular economy because Madalena was so good before uh, dealing with that. But I just have an example that is this one, an initiative of uh, a couple of years ago by the Italian Alliance for Sustainable Development. You know perfectly what the Friday for, Fu Friday for Future movement is, okay? They invented and proposed the Saturday for Future because they said, why only Friday? Uh, let's add some other days. So they invented this, uh, they proposed the Saturday for Future initiative. What do you do on Saturday? You buy all the things that are useful for the next week. You go to the supermarket and buy everything. Three or four bags of things spending a lot of money. So the invitation was when you go to the supermarket on Saturday, spend five, 10, 15 seconds more per product, trying to understand the story of, of the product, trying to understand from where, what it, what it is, uh, what, what are the, the, the um, uh, what, what is the trip, what is the transport, who made it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is a, a, a um, translation of what scientifically and technically is uh, the life cycle assessment in in a common way to uh, behave. Second, the greenhouse gas inventory. What is the greenhouse gas inventory? is uh, an inventory uh, an identification and measurement of all the sources of emission of greenhouse gas in a land for in a product chain etc etc according to the ipcc guidelines you can perform this uh, kind of analysis for a territory and it is well known also uh, I, I told you something in, in brazil about what we are doing in the province of siena uh, this kind of monitoring system can be implemented also uh, at the national, subnational, regional scale. is a, a little bit difficult, but it, uh, we can do that. Uh, we can identify uh, activity data, and the activity data, the number of uh, I don't know carts, the, the the amount of uh, liters of uh, fuel, the the number of uh, cows, uh, the the quantity of waste, and so on and so forth, transform this activity data into uh, uh, greenhouse gas by means of um, uh, emission factors. The main greenhouse gas CO2, CH4, and CO. Uh, uh, can be transformed, translated into the to tons of equivalent CO2 by means of, of appropriate global warming potential, that is a conversion factor, and you can uh, provide a register, uh, an inventory of all the emission that is useful to arrange policies. And the most important thing is having something like that. We started to be accountant of greenhouse gas in the province of Siena in 2008, uh, they wanted, um, in the light of the, the good result, because the forest of the province of Siena could have observed uh, il, the 70% the more or less of the total gross emission of the territory, then they wanted, the policy makers wanted to uh, achieve the uh, carbon neutrality, and they could do that in 2011. From there, from then, uh, we didn't 
lose this uh, this record, this uh, this uh, uh, result, and uh, but we are not so safe. Uh, in 2020, I know the, the emission decreased a lot because of COVID, but we are not safe. We risk to lose the carbon neutrality uh, um, achievement. Why? Because of uh, because uh, no one knows that this kind of monitoring exists, and uh, the, only the public body is trying to say something to improve the situation. Private sector are not involved. For this, for this reason, we are trying to uh, improve this kind of communication by the creation of the Territorial Alliance for Carbon Neutrality um, Column Siena. Why Column Siena? Because after the column, everyone can put the name of his city if uh, he wants. Uh, the Alliance is able to incorporate to host everyone who wants to give his contribution in different ways. Uh, the school can plant uh, three trees, uh, uh, say something to the students, uh, some advertisement can be done by association, uh, different municipalities can participate and especially enterprises can do something uh, re by reducing uh, their emissions. From this basic uh, uh, accounting system that is invent the greenhouse gas inventory, a lot of other implication can be um, created. One, for example, is the determination of the responsibility for CO2. Okay, uh, trying to overcoming, try, trying to overcome uh, the fact that many products are consumed in Italy, but they are produced elsewhere because it is more convenient from an economic viewpoint. It is not fair from the point of view of the distribution and the uh, accounting of uh, emission. Second, we could uh, go in depth we, in, 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 in some sectors, for example, the waste sector, in order to understand what is the best organization for um, waste management system in a territory on the basis of what is the results in terms of uh, emissions. Uh, this is another thing that has been presented by Enrico uh, during the presentation. The municipality of Grosseto asked us to uh, determine, to calculate the carbon footprint or administrative services. When they said that, uh, they asked us, uh, please calculate the carbon footprint of our administrative services. What are these administrative services? The issue of the ID, um, the, the document of change of residence, the um, uh, marriage licenses, the permission to park somewhere or somewhere not. My first uh, reaction was, you are crazy, completely crazy. What are you doing? At the end of the game, it was so interesting to have an overall menu in which we have calculated the CO2 emission of all the activity of the municipality, the activity made in within the offices, but also macro services like the distribution of uh, uh, food in the canteens, uh, street sweeping, the green maintenance, and so on and so forth. So they have the complete awareness of the weight of their activity, and they can say also to their citizen that they are trying to improve or they can plant trees in order to compensate their activity and so on and so forth. In part, this is propaganda. But the other part, the other uh, sides of the, the other um, uh, phase of the coin is increasing, increasing awareness uh, for someone that didn't know anything about that before this intervention. Uh, an important thing is the covenant of measure uh, that is evolving, and uh, now the covenant of measure uh, include the fact that the um, greenhouse gas inventory within a municipality must be uh, done and include within this agreement. And it is very important to uh, improve the, uh, the uh, knowledge uh, and uh, facilitate policy making in this di direction. 
Second last example, the ecological footprint. What is the ecological footprint? It's the transformation of our consumption in uh, productive land, okay? I want to present to you an example. And the example is the university ecological footprint. We should calculate the ecological footprint of university. What does it mean? It means that the ecological footprint is a the university ecological footprint is a measure of the use of natural resources and ecosystem services for running the activities and operation needed to provide education and conduct research. It's given by the sum of the direct and uh, direct and indirect ecological footprint. What uh, did we do? We created an ecological footprint calculator for the university campus, any university campus. It is available since a couple of months. Everyone can go in this website I, I'm going to show you to you and provide, uh, providing, uh, collecting data, uh, uh, can provide the results of the ecological footprint of the campus, the entire campus, independently of the dimension, of the size, of the uh, structure, of the um of the um, type of of campus if, if it is concentrated or spread in the, in the city and so on and so forth this is the uh, website uh, the project that originated the university ecological footprint is ustep that means enhancing enhancing university sustainability teaching and practices it is going to finish uh, within this uh, uh, website, you can register and you can um, have access to all the resources among which you have the ecological footprint calculator. Uh, it is inspired by the personal ecological footprint calculator, but that is a game. This is not a game because it can be managed by the governance of a university. They can uh, involve uh, an office, a sustainability office, good practices office, and year after year provide the results. Uh, mm, uh, the, all the material of, in this site can be uh, translated. It will be translated in, into English, Greek, Italian, and also Portuguese, uh, because the universities that participate to this project are the University of Salonico in Greece, the University of Siena in Italy, and the Universities of Aveiro and Universidade Aberta of Lisbon in Portugal. This is the calculator that you may say, uh, you may see here. This is uh, the, the, the yellow part on the left is the direct responsibility and the green part is the uh, indirect responsibility. We tried to build and design this kind of scheme, thinking at what an university uh, is doing. It's late, probably, a bit late. So we include, uh, um, apart the general information, the use of energy, uh, the buildings, uh, the, using, the use of water and man management of wastes, the clean services, the travel of the uh, members of the university for missions, for uh, internal transfer uh, within the campus, uh, material, material electronics and equipment, and all the food that is provided in the canteens. Okay? Uh, then some uh, Anglo-Saxon colleague suggests, uh, suggested that to include uh, also the sports that in Italy do not have, do not have um, a, a, a great, uh, I don't know, do not correspond to high, to, to great uh, uh, infrastructure. And then there is the uh, indirect part that regards commuting the, um, the, the trip from house to, uh, to work of uh, students and um, professor and uh, uh, administrative staff. What is done at home by internet, by food, et cetera, et cetera, especially in this, in this time in which a lot of people remained uh, at home and so forth and so on and so forth. The scope of the calculator is the management of administrative body of the university, possibly an office dealing with environmental sustainability practices. So an office can be created within the university anyway, and anyone else can uh, adopt and try to uh, play with the with the calculator with with the students. The problem is that to run 
the, uh, the app, the software, you need some data. And data are very important because um, are the prerequisite of knowledge. And the calculator uh, ends up with the final result of the ecological footprint of the university, but the discovery, the progress starts with the uh, collection of data. Uh, even in this case, also in this case, something that no one knows before this solicitation. You may register if you want, everyone can register and the rector may decide that only that, 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 that there will be a registration that it will be official for the university and help um, monitoring year after year the result of the university in order to understand if there are some policies that can uh, facilitate the reduction of ecological footprint and compare these performances with the, uh, with the performances of the year before. This is the landing page in, you, in which you can find the different uh, chapters of the uh, of the calculator. You can choose the the, the, the the items both in the map and in the in, in the in the list uh, on the top of the slide. And uh, um, um, when you had new data, you can go and uh, fill uh, the fill the, uh, the the cells. At the end, you will have a kind of a result like this. Uh, this is one of the four university that uh, has a total ecological footprint of 14,000 global hectares that depend on uh, direct responsibility and a little bit more on indirect responsibility. The final results can be, in order to facilitate comparison, can be divided per student, per administrative staff, per uh, graduated people, per publication uh, obtained, and per, uh, per fund. This is a kind of monitoring system that can complement, the, in my opinion, the economic financial accounting that a specific office in the university does every year because you cannot manage anything without having a final economic financial accounting. Why don't add uh, uh, such an instrument in order to understand something more under different viewpoints? The procedure is uh, characterized by a first important step that is passing from not knowing to knowing. You don't know anything. After data collection, you know something more. And then after that, you can prioritize, you can prioritize, that means identify some item that is more critical than other. You can act, make some policy, and then monitoring again. That means that the year after you can uh, uh, reuse the calculator and see what happened. Uh, uh, knowing means that you define, first of all, responsibility. You identify an office with some people that will go uh, around and ask data to everyone uh, can measure from a physical viewpoint, not economic viewpoint, from a physical viewpoint, what is the life of the campus. Um, uh, collect data, then prioritizing. For example, you, you may prefer to make policies on food, on energy, on commuting, and so on and so forth, and then, uh, uh, select some recommendation, then the government of the university can uh, operationalize the recommendation and make measures, make policies, and so on and so forth. Last example, I'm going to the conclusion, it's related to, to uh, the image evaluation, another system of environmental accounting based on sunlight, because everyone derives from sunlight. Uh, you can see a simple scheme that derives from uh, an exercise we have made with, uh, with children of primary school because uh, we make a lot of efforts to explain this kind of picture to university students, but children already know that, so they don't have any difficulty to understand what is, uh, what is this graph. 
solar energy is the solar energy necessary direct, directly and indirectly in the production of product or a service. And this is the promoter of the uh, energy. All energy transformation of the geobiosphere could be arranged in an ordered series to form an energy hierarchy with many joules of sunlight required to make a joule of organic matter, many joules of organic matter to make a joule of fuel, several joules of fuel required to make a joule of electric power, and so on and so forth. So the scheme is basically the, this one, this is the sun, this is the grass, the grass dies and becomes oil, and oil becomes uh, electricity. The quantity of usable energy diminish, but everything depends on the origin, so you can try to memorize what has been necessary in the past and give some weights that are very similar to unit prices, unit costs, cost better than prices, environmental cost, because in order to obtain uh, one joule of electricity, in the example I have done, you may need 7,500 7, uh, joule of sunlight in the history of the production of uh, electricity. So this is not so easy to, un to understand, this is not so easy to explain because on the one hand you have the sun, you know that the sun is on the basis of every process, but if you have to calculate this kind of uh, support quantitatively, it is a bit difficult to, uh, to, ar to arrive at a result. And so you use diagrams. Once again, children are able to make very easy and very clear diagrams, much more clear the, um, than what we are able to produce. For example, that one in the uh, on the on, on the right side of the uh, of the slide that uh, is a um, um, farm. Then we try to find solutions, communication solution, in order to, to uh, jump over the explanation, the technical explanation, because it is, is difficult. We are lazy, so we uh, try to uh, go that directly to people. And this is one of the two experiments I want to show to you. Once we went to a pizzeria, we said to the owner, give us your menu and we transformed his menu and we added to the ingredient of the pizzas and the price a number of sun. The sun testify how much energy has been necessary to uh, enable the pizza to stay in front of the of the customer. The yellow sun is a kind of renewable energy, the black sun is not renewable. That means that, for example, the sun incorporated in oil that is not renewable, in oil, in diesel, in electricity made by a thermoelectric plant. Well, the result, and um, on the bottom of the slide, you can, you can find uh, someone who is um, answering a questionnaire because uh, three or four of our colleagues went to the pizzeria and uh, Try, try to explain what we, we were doing, so, but in a few words, the result was that at the end of the evening, the owner of the pizzeria said that the, um, the, 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 the customers ordered a complete different set of pizzas just because of the sun. That means that they are uh, looking uh, for information, okay? So um, these um, tools are really powerful. Probably we don't know that people is uh, able to uh, receive and, and to, uh, um, in, I don't know, metabolize, uh, I don't know, that, that's a very bad word, but th this kind of, uh, of information. The last thing is uh, the fact that um, killed by desperation because we are not able to explain this kind of exercise, and starting with the sun, we decided to invent a comic stripe. And it is a comic stripe that 
tells a story of this uh, photon that arrives in the, on the earth uh, and help four children to help in turn a scientist to solve some problem. What is the problem? The problem is that there are very bad uh, subjects, some black shadows, that want to exploit and waste all the energy in the world for economic reasons. So these, uh, these scientists must be helped by someone to save the earth. And during the, 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 the story, Ray, that is the, the photon, um, um, bring these four uh, children, these four kids, in a kind of mental trip, during which they are able to understand that the photons, the sunlight arrives on the earth, is transformed and becomes almost everything. And we depend obviously on, on nature. This mental trip enabled them to understand almost everything. And the story finished with, I don't tell you anything more because you can download the, uh, the, the, the comic stripe for free and you can read it. Otherwise I, I spoiler the end of the, uh, of the story. I don't have a conclusion and I want to conclude with this phrase by Howard Odom, who once wrote that, will our youth be ready for the gradual transition to a fine steady state that carries the best of our recent cultural evolution into new, more miniaturized, more dilute, and more delicate ways of man nature? Uh, I like very much this phrase, which is not so easy to read, but it is full of words that are uh, absolutely not aggressive, dilute, delicate, miniaturized. Uh, this is a very soft but, but uh, substantial phrase that in my opinion express um, a feeling that is very important for all of us, that is love. Thank you very much.